Yeah, so this is my two cents, or in this case, five dollars, regarding the Occupy Wall Street movement. I support the Occupy Wall Street movement because I believe that in a representative democracy, that our representatives should actually represent uh, we the people rather than corporate interests, special interests, and foreign interests. Honestly, I don't really understand the controversy in regards to the analysis or the motivations of the protesters. It's obvious why they are occupying Wall Street and other areas. It's because they want to actually be heard. They want to actually be represented. And since they're not being represented by the political system, they have no choice but get in the face of the powers that be. So what of the status quo? What makes them tick exactly? You know, we hear these percentages thrown around a lot, the 1%, the 99%. In reality, it seems like the division is a little more even. What we have is, say, 50% of Americans supporting the Occupy Wall Street movement, probably because they themselves are in danger of slipping into poverty at any moment. And then we have the other half of the United States where people are doing all right for themselves. Maybe they're even successful, but they feel confident that they just keep believing and working hard and doing what's expected of them, that they will be able to live the American dream. So that's the political reality of the situation. If you want to be critical about this, and I do like to be critical. I would have to say that it's hard to understand and empathize with the 50% that is not in favor of the Occupy Wall Street movement just because they're successful. And that's because they're turning a blind eye to people who are in serious trouble. They're basically saying, well, I've got mine and you don't have yours, so fuck you. Clearly they are attempting to sort of sugarcoat that, but that's what they're saying. And uh, that's because they believe that their success is the direct result of their own hard work and on some level perhaps that uh, can be fully justified. So if capitalism was a religion, money would be its god. And anyone who was living in a capitalistic society and was not attempting to make as much money as possible and be successful financially would be a heretic. And that creates a stigma for anyone who isn't participating fully in the system, who doesn't have a job, who isn't trying to accumulate material wealth who isn't living the quintessential American dream. The only problem with this is that there are circumstances that just happen routinely in life where circumstances are beyond the control of the participants and for whatever reason they are unlucky and they get into a bad situation and that's not necessarily their fault and yet because of this sort of religion of capitalism that we have if you're in a bad situation you're supposed to feel guilty about that and there's a tremendous amount of guilt you could call it peer pressure where people are trying to make you feel guilty for not playing by the rules because that's how that's how these cliques work that's how religions work if you're not playing the game if you're not paying your dues you're going to be ostracized and you're going to be mobbed until you get back the program and that's all well and good but what happens if you can't get back into the program? What if, despite your best efforts, no matter what you do, you're trying as hard as you can to play by the rules, and yet you're still losing, and it's not your fault? Naturally, this is all exacerbated by the fact that fairness in a capitalism is actually a lot more subjective than most people would like to admit. The fact is that the free market is very arbitrary when it comes to rewarding people for the amount of work that they do or the uh, value that they provide. This is just my personal opinion, but I think more than anything, this is sort of at the heart of the Occupy Wall Street movement and potentially even the growing <coughs> social unrest in the United States and around the world due to the financial system. The proponents of capitalism have often said that out of all the systems in the world it's the fairest but if you want to be fair you have to look at capitalism critically and the truth of the matter is it's still an incredibly unfair system it's just a complete and total lie to say that people are rewarded proportionally for the amount of hard work they do in a capitalistic society that's wrong 
The truth is, people are rewarded for how opportunistic they are and how adept they are at gaming the system. The basic idea behind capitalism is that it generates so much wealth that even though it's inherently unfair on many levels, it still generates so much wealth that over time it gradually raises the quality of life for everyone who participates. The only problem with this thesis is that it itself is based on the biggest lie of all, that capitalism creates wealth. Capitalism doesn't create anything. It's just a mechanism for extracting wealth from the environment. That wealth already exists. It's inherent to the ecosystem, to civilization. The fact is capitalism just takes that wealth and ascribes arbitrary values and then distributes it according to a criteria of arbitrary factors. So what you have at the end of the day is a system that is more or less arbitrary to the core. It's only natural for people to question this system in times of crisis because, after all, where's the fairness in people being arbitrarily rewarded with resources that basically we all own? As long as everyone has what they need to survive and be prosperous, no one really cares about any of this because there's really no reason to get excited about things like money or resources when you have everything you need. It's only in times of crisis when people are deprived of the things they need to survive and be prosperous that they actually take a hard look at their economic system and realize that it is in fact inherently unfair. I read an article recently that was commenting on the Occupy Wall Street movement saying that it might be a prototype for a new way of living rather than a protest. And I think that's right. We need a new way of living, a new way of doing things because the current model, it isn't working anymore. In fact, it never, it never really worked per se because it's always been dysfunctional at its heart. A society that worships money is sick. It's sick in the head, it's sick in the heart, it's morally bankrupt. We've seen what happens when this kind of thinking becomes pervasive, becomes prevalent. I mean, we're living it right now. It's not the fault of a lack of regulation. It's not the fault of too much regulation. It's merely the result of an experiment that has clearly failed. And now it's up to us to start a new experiment. Whether the Occupy Wall Street movement succeeds or fails, I think is totally irrelevant. Because it's really nothing more than a symptom of what we all know to be true. Even a perfect economic system can fail if people lose sight of the ideals that make it work. Occupy Wall Street is a perfect opportunity for us as a nation to reevaluate our ideals. What is truly valuable to us? How do we preserve it? How do we sustain it? These are questions that I just don't hear coming from the status quo or from the countless people who are on the side of the status quo despite the mounting body of evidence that is basically condemning their point of view. Despite the negative tone of this video, I think it's important to believe in humanity, to believe in our potential to make better choices in the future. So I'm, I'm fairly optimistic about how this whole thing is going to turn out because it's obvious that even though there's a lot of people out there who are really just morally and mentally bankrupt, I don't believe that they represent the majority. In fact, I'd have to say that they're probably just about 1% of the total population. So, thanks for listening.